Hi everyone, this is Sabdarshi Goswami again. So this is the lecture 7 of machine learning and we are going to discuss the hands-on on linear regression, the theory that we have discussed in lecture 6. Okay, so the platform that we are going to use is Kaggle. So I will, uh, you know, rewrite all about the link that you will have to follow uh, while, uh, you know, executing this exercise. So what you can do is you can actually uh, create an account in Kaggle uh, and uh, it is pretty easy. You can sign up with your uh, Google account and uh, what you can see is here is a web version of Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is a web version, but this is accessible through URLs. All right. Uh, so once you create a notebook in Kaggle, what happens is some of the uh, cells comes pre-filled. So I have not changed anything over here. And uh, basically the Jupyter Notebook has two kind of cells. Many of you know that one is called as code and another is called as markdown. So code cell is where we will write our code and markdown is a cell where we'll describe the same. So here is the small menu of my notebook on getting started, uh, importing the library, importing and inspecting the data, fitting the model, setting the input and output variable, fitting the linear regression model, inspecting the model and checking out the validity of the model. Okay, fitting a linear regression uh, model in any of this, uh, you know, any of these tools is fairly easy. But what I would want you to focus more on is, uh, you know, how to interpret the model. All right. So let's get started. Okay. So what we'll do first is we'll import the library. So these are some of the libraries which will always be required. You know, you will need pandas, you will need numpy, you will need matplotlib. You will need C bond. So pandas is for uh, importing data. Okay, so this this has to do with data frames. Uh, NumPy is for uh, you know handling uh, arrays and doing numerical computations on that. So arrays, matrices, tensors, all of that. Okay, now and sklearn is uh, the libraries which are used for machine learning. Okay, now let's go ahead. So what you will have to do is if you want to run any of the cells, you just need to highlight that and run this. Okay, so this is run. You can see that something is changing there for an instance. There is a pause button coming and when that pause button is gone and the play is again enabled, that means your cell has been successfully run. This will not have any output because you are just importing the libraries. Next, go ahead and import our data. Now, this is a path which is to be followed for Kaggle. So basically, uh, you are using this pandas library and read CSV uh, function of that library. You just need to give the name of the file. And of course, with the name, you need to give the path. So here, apart from reading the file, we are also going to look at the shape of the data frame. Shape will give us the row and column and dataset dot head will give us some some number of rows from the top. We have given the argument as five, which indicates that we are interested at the top five rows. So let's run this. OK, so as I said that, you know, the these are the rows and columns. Now look at this. So if you remember your advertising data set, which we are using from ISLR, it had three independent variables, TV, radio, and newspaper, and one dependent variable, which was sales. So apart from that, what you'll see is that one extra column has come, which is nothing but the row number. Okay. So while, while we are building the model, we should make sure we are not using this particular column. Okay. Now let's go ahead and describe the data set. Similarly, we run it. Okay. So we'll see that these are the name of the columns, these are the values, and it has given some descriptive statistics. So what is the count? All of them has 200 rows. And then what is the mean of each one of them? What is the standard deviation? What is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? What is the quarter one uh, value? Quartile one, quartile two, which is the median, and quartile three, which is also displayed over here. So let's first do a quick scatter plot between one of the variables TV and another variable sales. So you can do it for, uh, you know, all the variables, 
but for time being we have we are just doing uh, on tv and cells data set is the data frame and plot is actually a method on the pandas data frame okay which you can apply on the data frame and we are telling what is the x and what is the y we are also mentioning the axis title x level and y level with which you can play around and you can change your x and y so you can see that yes there seems to be a positive relationship isn't it uh, that when the tv advertisement goes up the sales is going up okay now let's go to fitting the model all right so first thing that we need to do is we are we need to set up the input and output variable okay so uh, pandas data frame has a you know beautiful way of slice and dice which is called as i lock index location so it has two parts first part is for indexing the rows the second part is for indexing the columns okay and in the first case what we are mentioning is that we are going to consider all the rows and we are going to consider the second third and fourth column okay so your question may be why you are writing 1 to 4 why not why not the first is included because like java like many programming languages python's index starts from 0 now your question may be that okay fine so if it is 1 to 4 then uh, it should include second third fourth and fifth column so this type of notation in python is called as a range and any range in python has this convention that it is up to but not ex not inclusive okay or exclusive of it so when we say 1 to 4 it means 1 2 3 all right so x is having the second third and fourth column and y is having the fifth column which is the output variable response variable or the dependent variable next what we are going to do is as you remember that to you know overcome overfitting we always split our data set between training and testing okay so uh, here what has been done is uh, look at these parameters uh, we are giving so this is a method train test split where we have given first the input variables then the output variable and then test size is 0 0.2 which means that testing set will have around 20 percent of the data okay and that means training set will have rest of the data or 80 percent of the data and random state 0 means that uh, it is, it is actually you can give any value but if you and me use the same random random state then we will generate the same training and test set because otherwise as it is random sample it will vary between you and me then we initialize a linear regression model uh, akin to you know object oriented uh, terminology so this is the initialization and then we are fitting this with the input and output it is on training remember that we always train on the or we build our model on the training set so let's run this let's uh, run this also fast i'm not sure if i run this so let me run this one all right let me now run this one okay so it is run now and now let's inspect the model let's see what are the values of this beta 0 and beta 1 that we are seeing earlier so if you run this you will get the value of beta 0 which is intercept is 2.99 and the coefficients are 0 0.04 0 0.196 and minus 0 0.002 can you tell me why three coefficients are coming think about it because there are three independent variables right so for each one of them the coefficient is coming the first one is for tv then for radio then for newspaper okay next let's do this thing let's uh, use this and predict on the test set okay and then what we'll do is we will put the predicted value which is from y pred and uh, the y test which is the actual value put it in a data frame and we'll do a scatter plot and see you know how, how what is the trend among them okay so let's run this and you will see that you know we are getting quite correlated values so that means that the actual and predicted are quite close in this case isn't it okay now let's check the validity of the model okay incidentally 
Python's linear regression in sklearn doesn't give a way to validate the model. For that, we are using some other library. Let's run this and then we'll focus on understanding the output of this. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the result. Okay, so it tells you that the dep dependent variable is cells. Okay, the R squared value is 0 0.907. Do you remember what is R squared? R squared is the amount of uh, amount of variability in the data which is explained by your model. Okay, what is the adjusted R squared? It turns out that as you increase the number of variables, R squared has a tendency to increase. Okay, so you do some kind of adjustment with the R squared. Okay, so that the number of variables uh, is taken care of. Okay, and then there is a F statistic. So F statistic is another statistical significance measure. Basically, if you remember that when we are trying to find, uh, when we are trying to find the validity of a particular predictor, we can use a t test because it is a univariate distribution. If you have multiple variables, like in this case, so basically the model, you want to uh, establish the validity of the model, then you can use F statistic. Okay, and probability of F statistics is nothing but the P value of F statistics. So this has a pretty low value, which tells that our model is significant. Now, this log likelihood AIC and BIC, we are not discussing. These are also ways to test the significance of your model, but this is important when you do not have a validation set with you. Okay, all right. Now uh, let us go and inspect uh, individual coefficients. Okay, only thing again I want you to focus on is the p value, and as discussed in the theory class, you will see that the p value of newspaper has come to be quite large which means that a uh, newspaper is not a significant predictor okay mm -hmm. and this 0 0.025 0 0.975 do you know what this is this is nothing but the confidence interval okay so this is the 5% confidence interval one one you know one other way of uh, one other way of uh, validating uh, your uh, coefficients is just check whether the coefficient value is uh, within the confidence interval or not okay so when we are doing when you are setting up an hypothesis all right so uh, let me now uh, close this session and uh, i hope you got an understanding how to use linear regression with python and uh, uh, please run this uh, kernel because when you run and play around then only you will you will get some more insights so thank you for watching this video